So this is now uh, start of the tourism day. Um, and uh, we have a uh, Jarko Sarinen uh, keynote speech. And, and then we have also one uh, very numerous participant uh, uh, session, special session. Uh, and a few words about Jarko. Jarko is our old friend. And, uh, and he's, he has been in Pano, differently from Marco, uh, several times, uh, giving some lectures. And the more Jarko's uh, main focus is tourism, tourism geography. But he has been also involved in development studies, uh, different political ecology uh, projects, wilderness, which is probably related to that uh, uh, Lapland, which has been also your uh, study subject. And also the Arctic and uh, also African regions. So we've been in Africa a few times or even several times. So that I'm really looking forward to hear a very interesting um, paper about our, our presentation about um, COVID impact, which, uh, which was really probably, probably the hardest to tourism industries and, and uh, what's the other the prospects for, for that. So, Jarko, floor is yours. Oh, thank you, Kari. Uh, thanks for the introduction and uh, an invitation and, and greetings from the minus degrees. It happened last night, so we are still in minus minus one. But yeah, I will I will I will start uh, working with the with the slides. Um, So yes, uh, so good good morning to everybody, um, and uh, I have. Make it, make it switch it on, on full screen mode. It isn't. It should nope. be. Not yet. Oh, well, there may be a lag. Let's wait for a while. I'll 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 use a few words before I continue, but it should be at least in my screen. It's it's full. Mm. Marit, what about you? Not full screen. Hmm. That's odd, but we will give uh, Microsoft few few more <laughs> few more time. Uh, I didn't change the title. I I, I think I, I need to carry the burden with with that, except the the question mark here. But but I I, I do had have, have to uh, admit that I had some challenges with with limiting the the presentation. Uh, because it it has some many many key words uh, which are uh, both work in synergy but also conflict with it, each other. But uh, let's see how it goes. But before I'll I'll, I'll proceed. Uh, any change in your <laughs> your direction? Let me nope. do it again. Then Maybe you can. Uh, uh, I will. I will want to come back with the full screen. Now it works. Now it works. OK, so I just had to go out for, for a while. So yes, uh, something about resiliency, responsibility and, and, uh, uh, and tourism in the context of, of sustainable development goals with, with <laughs> emphasis on COVID as well. So there's plenty of, plenty of issues and directions. Uh, not all can be covered in an equal way. But let's start with the, some ideas that, that are behind or, or justify the, uh, the sustainability or, or sustainable yield or whatever you want to call it in, in, in tourism. This is a, a, a present, uh, from presentation by, by Arthur uh, Gillis, who is a, a CEO of the Marriott uh, Hotels, the largest or the second largest hotel chain in the world. And he has stated that tourism is without any question the best export in the world. You can continue to sell tourists forever as long as it does not destroy itself. So the idea of sustainability in, in, in certain sense has is built in to the industry. Uh, although it, it has a certain specific approach to sustainability. And that has made some of the colleagues um, as, as academics are critical to, to raise um, critical evaluations. Uh, for example, uh, 
in sustainable tourism, a neoliberal self-interest is seen as a clear driver, or, or, or businesses are seen more as, as interested in sustainability of profitable corporate growth, rather than the wider sustainable development. Uh, and that seems to be a general tone in, in the discussions uh, versus the industry view on sustainability and the policy views on sustainability and then the academic views on sustainability. And, and that raises some key questions that how, how do we go beyond rhetoric that we, we emphasize a lot of, of sustainability in industry talk or policy talk, but how do we go beyond, especially beyond economic sustainability, which seems to be the strong emphasis in and a driver. And, and second, how do we locate and set responsibility for wider uh, sustainability in tourist development, especially in relation to sustainable development goals, which go much beyond the, the economic sustainability alone. Um, but let's start uh, positively. Um, sustainable tourism, is a, it has a history from 1990s, or, or, uh, and it has, it has really turned to become a success story for, for tourism research. Um, many colleagues have stated that it is one of the great success stories of tourism research, which has made tourism highly policy relevant, that it, 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 it has become much more important in, in development discussions, including regional development, but also, also in, in, the, uh, in the issues in global, global south, global north development. Uh, and this great policy success uh, is demonstrated that that almost all major, or let's say all major development actors and organizations and the industry and public at large have bought into the idea and promise of sustainable tourism. That sustainable tourism is something that we should focus and develop about. Uh, before uh, the current sustainable development goals, uh, the agenda 2030, uh, we had the United Nations Millennium Development Goals from 2000 to 2015, and, and the role of tourism was, was clearly emphasized in, in, in that round. For example, the Secretary General of the, uh, of the World Tourist Organization, which is linked to the United Nations, uh, stated that tourists can be a leading industry in the fight against poverty. That is much role given to the private sector, small and medium size, uh, based business. Uh, similarly, the Secretary General of the United Nations Trade, Trade and Development stated that tourist capacity to create, to create jobs is central to this debate, referring to poverty uh, reduction and alleviation, which was the key focus in, in, in the Millennium Development Goals. And also World Bank has stated that tourism is an attractive vehicle for poverty alleviation and development. So there's a lot of, lot of uh, emphasis on, on the positive role that tourists could play for development in, in a global scale. However, uh, it's not about tourists per se or, or any, any given kind of tourism. It's, it's especially, it, it specifically emphasizes the role of sustainability. Uh, 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 as Ban Ki-moon, the former former Secretary General of the United Nations said that insofar as it is developed in a sustainable manner, tourism has the capacity to contribute to the alleviation of poverty. So it's not tourism, but it's sustainable tourism that has the capacity. I'm not going to go to, detail, uh, to the conceptual debates on what is sustainable tourism and, and, and how you can define that is a, that is a bit too boring for, for a morning, morning presentation. So we'll take it as a granted. But currently we have connected tourism or sustainable tourism to the sustainable development goals, uh, including the poverty reduction, which was the, in, in the main focus in, in the Millennium Development Goals, plus the other 16 other goals. But specifically in, in the, in, in the uh, uh, Agenda 2030, the role of tourism is emphasized explicitly in relation to three specific uh, goals and, and their targets. And the, those, those goals are number eight, 12 and 14. Eight is promote sustained, inclusive and sustainable economic growth. The emphasis is on inclusive and sustainable economic growth. Uh, and then uh, uh, Sustainable Development Goal 12, Sustainable Consumption and Production 
that is a you know, market-driven uh, view on, on, on sustainable development and then sustainable development 14 uh, to conserve and sustainable use of ocean, seas and marine resources for sustainable development. Uh, all are highly relevant and, and, and tourists sure can contribute to this and then there, there have been a lot of, lot of studies and discussions including some additional policy making that tourists could contribute to many, many other sustainable development goals, including the original, uh, including the Millennium Development Core Goal, poverty alleviation, reducing poverty uh, by uh, 2030. This development promise, promise uh, has been largely based on, on the idea that tourism is a resilient industry that there has been a resilient, steady, strong growth since the 1950s, since the Second World War, basically. Here is the, the uh, World Tourist Organization's uh, um, statistics, uh, which, which basically depict uh, the past um, development till 2010 in this figure, and then the rest is estimate or forecast. And it, it, it shows that that tourism, in a, in a global sense, the international tourism based on the international uh, arrivals uh, uh, statistics has grown steadily. There have been some uh, speed bumps. Um, if, if we would look at the, the, the curve in, in details, we could see the, the oil crisis in 1970s and 80s, uh, the 9-11, uh, is, 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 is there and, and the financial crisis 2007-8 starting and obviously if we would have statistics on the current situation we would see the COVID there. But the past growth has been quite steady uh, and, and, and this, has, this has given the uh, ground for, for thinking the future prospects of tourism to deliver development, sustainable development. Uh, and indeed, um, tourism is, 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 has been, is and will be a, a, a large industry. Here are uh, the World Tourist Organization's uh, uh, key figures. Uh, now, yesterday there was a discussion about statistics in the Danish context, uh, that whether they are reliable or not. I, I, I don't, I, I don't, have opinion about that, but uh, but here in the context of tourism, I would say that the the usual lies, major lies statistics may uh, sometimes apply. But let's uh, think that these give a, a, a correct direction how important the industry is globally. That every tenth job is is based on on tourism. Um, Seven percent of the world's export is estimated to be based on on this. Um, industry and about 30 percent of the services exports are based on on tourism so it is a big big industry whether the the numbers are factual or or or, or, or indicate a, a certain certain direction tourism does matter and it is understandable then that tourism is is, is aimed to be used for sustainable development and achieving the sustainable development goals especially in the global Global South. However, despite all these prospects and promises, there has been a constant flow of criticism concerning the idea of and, and, and definitions and operationalization oper, of sustainability in tourism. Uh, and I have just taken, uh, you know, this decade by decade uh, examples, uh, starting from John Swarbrick in 1999 who stated in his book Sustainable Tourist Management, uh, sustainable tourism is perhaps an impossible dream. Uh, Richard Sharpley, 10 years later, has, has added in his own, own book uh, or about, the, uh, about sustainable tourism that it is an idea whose time has now passed and we need to move beyond sustainability. And uh, more recently, 10 years later, 2019, Regina Swains has said that tourism is entrancing rather than alleviating poverty. These depict quite the opposite view compared to the policy promises and policymakers' views on, and especially the industry's views on, on, on how tourists could contribute 
to, to sustainable development goals and sustainable, de uh, sustainable development and sustainable development goals in now and in future. And there are indeed a number of challenges for the resiliency and sustainability of tourism that, that research has identified. Uh, this, this, is not, this is not the list that, that could not be added more, but I'll just uh, select three here, which are partly interrelated, and I'm, I'm not going to talk about climate change too much. It's not that it wouldn't be <laughs> important and timely, it's just that we, we do have a time, time to keep this morning as well. But as, as the conference is, is, is contextualized to COVID pandemic and, and, and its role and, and how, how regional development, and in this case, how tourist development and could serve sustainability. I'll, I'll start with that and then I will end, end with the inclusive growth uh, discussions with some examples from um, uh, Northern Finland, Lapland. Uh, uh, as as Kari mentioned, uh, tourism has probably been the most um, uh, suffered industry or field of economy uh, uh, based on, on the COVID pandemic. There are different different estimates, but they, they give the, about the same same direction. OECD has indicated that that for 2020 international tourists declined about 80 percent. The World Tourist Organization is a bit more positive, but still that the decline was 73 percent. And uh, I wouldn't say surprisingly, because we know how 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 the second or the third waves were for the COVID, but the 21 this year may even be worst. Uh, according to the World Tourist Organization, uh, the early part, the first five months of, of this year, the international tourists declined more than the previous year, about 85%. And obviously, the tourist receipts have declined in, in, in the same sense, depending on the, on, on the nature of tourism, whether it's a, a domestic or international before pre-COVID. and uh, how they have been socially innovative, how innovative they have, they have been with their with the products during the during the COVID. Uh, obviously, domestic tourism has not suffered that much, but it hasn't replaced the international demand. Uh, in, in Finland, the estimation is that this year, 2021, 20, uh, the domestic tourism has returned economically uh, to the same level as before the COVID. That is. 2019. So it would be in the same level, but still we are missing the international tourism. So, so, so it hasn't it hasn't uh, um, added added uh, to that that direction. And secondly, uh, the domestic demand is often a bit different than than the international demand. So the pattern pattern and structures have changed in, in consumption during the COVID. Uh, some indications for, from the early, early, early phases of the COVID uh, that, that it's, it's our, uh, you know, uh, not only traveling, but our behavior and our, and our focus on, on how we want to spend our time changed quite rapidly. Here's the flight search uh, statistics from, from, uh, from the early, early phases of the COVID pandemic, and we can see that, that the decline was fast. Um, faster in, 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 in the early part of 2020. However, uh, if we look at, we think about what will happen in the post-COVID-19 tourism. First, I think we need to be critical what about the post. We may not reach the post phase very soon. The COVID will, will be with us and, and there will be ad adjustments in the structures and practices of the tourism industry and mobilities that remain and impact also the future. So if we compare, for example, the 9-11 issues, uh, uh, tourists returned in, in New York to the same level before the terrorist attack in four years about. However, the world of tourists never returned to the same way. We, we all know when we go, go to the airport that what, what kind of procedures there are due to this, this, this very specific incident. Uh, and the same is highly assumed with, with the COVID. 
that there will be security issues that, that are focusing on health matters. Uh, there will be more automatized controls uh, and robotics and then and so on in, in, in future. The, the terminals and, and airports will be designed in a way that that human labor is not that much needed and 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 you, you're not expected to hang around that much at the airports anymore, but that's fast. So uh, there will be changes in that and also changes in destination governance and how do we manage and, and, and how, how, how the infrastructures are built. But well, I'll get back to that a bit later. Then there, there's an issue of about the re return of, of domestic and slow, slow tourism or, or regional tourism that will happen. but uh, it, it is highly unlikely that, that the international tourism would be replaced by, by domestic tourism. Still, uh, during the COVID uh, uh, time, people have invested in uh, second homes, uh, 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 recreational vehicles, boats um, and, and, and whatever. Those investments will stay uh, remain in, in future with people of, and obviously they will use them uh, instead of, 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 of doing so many international travels. But still, the return of the domestic tourism may not be that, that significant. However, it, 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 has a, it, it, it will play uh, some role. Then there are two school of thoughts that how do we go or how, to, how should we go to post-COVID tourism? The, both are ideological, of course. The, the other, other one is em emphasizing that, that the need that now we could think uh, the, the critically the structures of the past tourism and its growth orientation and turn it towards more sustainable and climate change friendly direction with having a, a strong regulative uh, frameworks and taxation and, and so on for that. That's one, 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 one direction. The other direction is that we need to return fast to the growth path as soon as possible. And I, I would assume that even though we will rethink seriously the sustainability and, and its connection to tourism or tourism connection to sustainability and sustainable development, there will be return to the growth path in, 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 a, in, a, in a near future. Uh, the estimations are that that when we have the vaccination and the va vaccination passports working, it would take about four to five years to return to pre-COVID time. That we will see, but there are indications that the return may be fast. Here's, the, here's an example from from the 2020 uh, uh, hotel occupancy rates in in from the start of the of the pandemic. To the, to, to the September, to the end of the holiday season in, in Europe. This is a Europe-focused uh, statistics. And you can, we can see that the, the drop, the decline was fast in, in March. End of March when, when the pandemic started and there was a really, really slow period in the hotels till early June, July, and then in all, when, when tourists started to grow again. So it didn't take that long when 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 the when 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 the people started to travel again after the first wave. However, uh, then it declined again, and we are uh, and, and uh, as mentioned that the following year has been has been even worse compared to to, to 2020. But this indicates that. Uh, the, the people's memory may not be that that long, although these uh, statistics are based ma on mainly on, 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 on domestic tourism and its revival in, in 2020. Okay, that's about the COVID. We will get back to that. Uh, I'll just uh, focus uh, in, in, in the end. Um, okay, the second challenge is this climate change and its connection to global tourism or global tourism and its connection to climate change. I'll, I'll just have one one figure here, no more, and I hope this this serves the purpose, although it is a bit of a pointing. Uh, uh, the left left uh, images is, is 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 from the IPCC's um, report for uh, 2018 and, and and now the the new one 2021, stating that. 
uh, stating that we should reduce the the emissions uh, uh, in, in, in the pathway that leads maximum 1.5 Celsius uh, um, increase compared to pre-industrial levels. Uh, uh, and, and that is the, the green green direction there. Uh, and, and then the current warming rate indicates that if we, if we continue business as usual, that we don't do anything. And now if we look at the the estimates and the past past growth of the of the tourism industry based on the avia aviation. This is a, in, international uh, arrivals in, in aviation statistics on the right hand side. You can see that it does not indicate a strong emphasis on aiming towards uh, slowing down anything, but instead it is it is as the estimation is is uh, business as usual. Obviously, these are estimates. We don't know the future, but but the but the industry itself is, is not is not um, uh, responding very fast to the need so far. But I, I will get back back to that as well. Uh, third one, which we, well, in which we use a bit more time, is 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 this issue of the challenge of inclusive growth, because it is a basically foundation for for tourists to serve the the sustainable development goals. The inclusive growth. In, in, in its simplest form, refers to that uh, the, the, the growth that is distributed fairly across society and creates opportunities for. In, in a tourist context, it means that it doesn't focus on tourism and the industry and the economy and only, but also the local populations, in, uh, uh, social and, and, and environmental sustainability dimensions as well. However, the basic nature of tourism is quite often exclusive in many many respects, uh, in at least in, in, in some level. But it's very notable, especially in the context of international tourism and especially in international tourism in, in peripheries, which often leads to so-called enclave tourism, which is a, which development is characterized by some sort of, 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 of regulations of host guest relations and related mobilities uh, and, and benefit sharing and in, in, in the context of inclusive and exclusive development or growth. These tourist enclaves are quite typical, in, especially in the Global South, which challenges the sustainable development connection concerning many, many, many uh, goals and targets, including poverty alleviation. Here's the de long definition for, for, for the enclaves, but basically, uh, uh, show and show state that enclaves are operated by global capital and transnational organizations through a, a series of spatial networks uh, that operate in, in different levels, which, unless they are strongly regulated by the local state, allow only limited economic benefits to accrue to the host communities. That is quite a strong statement, but but unfortunately, the reality has 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 uh, followed the the, the, the conceptual uh, idea. Uh, a bit old uh, generalization from the global south when we had travel agencies uh, in, in the 1980s and 1990s. And, and it basically, uh, the research indicated at that time that if the carrier, the aviation uh, uh, business and the travel agent was non-local, Westerner, let's, let's say that uh, it was uh, London-based, uh, well, British Airways and, and a London-based travel agent, the leakage was about 50 percent, plus minus five, uh, well, a bit more, sorry. Uh, uh, but if we add to that equation that that also the accommodation was was a transnational, non-local, the leakage uh, uh, from the local uh, regional economy uh, turned to 76, 78 uh, percent. And for example, uh, currently, in Botswana, the leakage is about 70-75%, indicating that this does still work, even though we may not have, have all, the, all, the, all the variables like travel agent uh, involved anymore. So it, it is a serious issue if it, if it goes to extreme. Uh, and it's not an only, only issue in, in, the, in the global south, but also global north, in, in, in obviously with uh, contextual differences. And here is an example of, of, of this, um, this uh, enclavization, partly its reasons and then its outcomes. 
in, in the Finnish Lapland. The, the, the area has a, has a long history in tourism. It, it's, it's a highly touristic, touristic area. There are very large uh, resorts, for example, Levi, uh, about 35,000 uh, uh, 35, bed places, uh, Ullas, uh, almost the same uh, nowadays. Uh, Ruka, which is uh, there in 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 in, in, in old region side, uh, about twenty five thousand, and then Saariselka, about uh, less than twenty thousand nowadays, and uh, and it is characterized by both international and and domestic tourism, but especially lesser tourism, and 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 the employment effect is about six six thousand person years. Uh, local empl employment varies between sixty to ninety five percent, depending the resort, but we don't go to the to the that, that level of details. Now, uh, there is a certain kind of a governance uh, uh, thinking behind the tourist development there. First, there's a strong emphasis on, on sustainable tourist development, as said. Oh, it has been a success story in a policy level. Uh, uh, and then there are certain certain key ideas how tourists should be developed. Firstly, first is that there should be a certain level of standardization and quality control, meaning that, that there should be thematic tourist products that that are that are in international level. So, uh, and, and secondly, that the investment should be channeled through the main resorts. That you don't spread the the investments to to all around, but you you focus on on the resorts. And what have been the outcomes? Well, here are here are. Uh, some uh, some development figures from uh, from three uh, different uh, resorts and and then and the municipalities they are based on. I'll just take Ullas because it's the most most um, demonstrative example and and that saves the time time here. But basically, uh, this this shows the difference how how uh, business units uh, employment uh, jobs job numbers and populations have have changed in the resort area in time, in selected time zones. And, and the resort is defined here based on the postal code. So that for, for the statistical reasons, so it's it, it gives a it, it works here relatively OK. So Ullas, which is in the Kovari municipality in 1990, 16% uh, uh, of the business units of the whole municipality were there in the resort area. But uh, by 2014, that has increased to 42, uh, 42%, meaning that the, the businesses have concentrated increasingly to the resort areas in the municipalities where the, where the resorts are located in. The same has happened with the, with the, with the employment. In, in, in 1980, 5% of the, of the jobs were based on the resort area, on the current resort area, the postal code, while 2014, Every third job was placed on the resort area, and the same has happened with the population in in in, in Ullas. Four percent of, of the population were were based uh, in 1970s in in the in the resort, and currently is somewhere there in 15 plus percent. So basically, there, there is this this kind of enclavization that the resorts are, are 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 changing in a different direction than the rest of the municipality, and it can be depicted in in, in the other way. Uh, here are a bit, bit more resorts from, from the Finnish Lapland, and the upper one shows how the municipalities, including the resort areas, uh, how the population has, has changed from 1990s to 2014. And you can see that the curve is down, uh, the trend is down uh, in, in, in general, while if we, if we look at the, the tourist resorts and their population uh, uh, changes from 1990 to, 1990s to, to 2014, the, the trend is highly growing. So, so clearly the resorts are, 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 are developing and changing, transforming differently than the, the, the rest of the municipality, indicating that there is this kind of enclavization, separation between tourism and non-tourism spaces in, in, in local scale. Obviously, there are good... Hmm. What was that? Do you do you still see the? Yeah, Bill Gates makes tricks. Go on. <clears throat> the, 
Is it working now? Well, we see you, but we don't. Oh, no, no, the presentation is back. OK, good, because I, I was seeing you and, and myself, and, and that's not the point at the moment. OK, so let me speed speed here. Uh, I mean, there are good, good, well, good and good reasons why, why we have this kind of development. First of all, that the governance model is that that if you invest to the, 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 to the destination existing res large resource, the, the Matteo's effects will 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 come. Those who have will have more, uh, uh, and and it, this all also is based on the industry's own own logic. It's a very e efficient way economically to organize things and 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 have the the, the surplus. So it's a market driven approach. Secondly, the customers seem to like it as well. It's a, it, this all inclusive format is, uh, is 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 simple for them. And as, as Richard Butler has said, many people seem to enjoy being a masterist. So, so and that it, it makes it easy. But there, there is an, a, an, a new justification as well, and it's the COVID-19, uh, and it operates both in global south and global north. Uh, there are many, many destinations that have made these bubbles that that you can safely be there without connection to local people, without connection to many other tourists either. But especially to the to the locality. While you don't have a connection to the locality and local people, you also don't spread the, the benefits of tourism to the to the localities that 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 eff efficiently. So that 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 creates further creates these enclaves. And also in Finland last year there was a serious plans to make make a tar tourist bubble for for the Christmas tourists that they wouldn't meet any locals. While while here it didn't work. And, and, and this year, uh, these this discussions have, have have not been that active. But anyway, the, the COVID has further emphasized this this process. So, despite all the prospects and promises of of, of sustainable tourist policies and the industry's um, uh, indications that that they will deliver deliver, deliver development, sustainable development. The, the, oh, sorry, I, for some reason I have the, the same same slide here again. Uh, the um, th there is this criticism that I have already discussed. Uh, so, to the conclusions, uh, uh, as, as the time flies, uh, it, it is fair to say that despite the challenges, tourists do have a potential to make significant contributions to sustainability and some of the sustainable development goals, especially in, in local scale and also beyond the economy alone, that it can create social and environmental benefits. Uh, but so far, however, the search for sustainability has been largely based on self-regulation in, in destination governance. In, in, in destination context, that has been uh, that has been highly evident in corporate social responsibility programs. They do work well and and, and provide uh, uh, certain benefits. But a ma majority of the tourist businesses barely meet the well, not barely. They do meet the legal uh, 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 regulations, but those do not bring sustainability yet. So uh, uh, that that is not that is not the dominating fo form of, of organizing the tourist production based on corporate social responsibility, for example. Then secondly, the creation of a uh, of perfect green consumer who doesn't consume less but consume in a responsible way has been more in, in an ideological product than than reality. It, 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 uh, academic research there are very few papers that can point out that that there is a significant segment that that is that is operating based on on, on this rather than, than than price driven or other other such uh, variable driven tourism and then uh, beyond the destination like scale <laughs> the aviation industry and its emission control uh, uh, are not included in the Paris Agreement. They are based on self-regulation uh, emphasis, and, and there is a clear path dependency, dependency in action uh, that, that things are, are, are justified based on, on, on the mistakes done in, in the past and legitimized based on, on, on certain levels of, 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 of emissions in, in the 1918. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, 2018, 20, 2019 levels. 
which does not indicate a sustainable level. It, it just justifies high, high emissions. And it's also based on, on certain level of assumption that there are losers and winners in, 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 in the connections between tourism and, and climate change. Here's a Deutsche Bank uh, uh, map on, on how climate change influences on tourism from 2008, early, early, early. It's a, it's a simplistic thing, but the bottom line is, is that global north will be positively affected in general, while the global south plus Australia will be negatively influenced uh, uh, from, from the climate change. And obviously this, this has led to the idea that we will then try to build up the resilience of the global south uh, uh, by, 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 uh, by focusing on the symptoms, but not, not the original process. So this, this kind of a this relates to policymakers and 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 uh, and the industry's response to to tourism and climate change uh, uh, relations and and tourism and sustainable development relations. This is from from uh, New Orleans uh, uh, after the Katrina uh, uh, hurricane, uh, stating that uh, um, that uh, Tracy L. L. Washington uh, from the Louisiana uh, Justice Institute has stated this and then it has been widely used there that stop calling me resilient because every time you say oh they are resilient that means you can do do something else to me i am not resilient meaning in this context that indeed we can build the adaptive capacity of the of of, of the of the suffering destinations in in, in various places places in the earth uh, we can build uh, infrastructure for for uh, or wave breakers but we don't focus on the reasons why the sea is rising uh, in, in, in tourism. We, we, we are not changing the structures of the aviation, but they are still based on self-regulation of the, of, the, of the industry. And, and obviously that kind of changes, that kind of social innovations we need to do in, in, in future in order for tourists to serve the sustainable development goals and in, in future. And I think that that was my final final say in time. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jarko. <clears throat> uh, I think we can take some minutes from the coffee break because we don't have a uh, next uh, parallel session uh, waiting us and uh, we can take some five minutes for questions. So anyone? Want to ask? Well, it's not yet, and I'm of course obliged to do that. <laughs> and we have had this temporary uh, permanent discussion uh, about temporary versus permanent change. Uh, we've been even discussing it with my colleague, also geographer from Tallinn University, and he was in the beginning quite uh, mm, ignorant at all. It will return to the same situation, and uh, nobody will forget. Uh, nobody will reman uh, remember it in, in, in five years' time. But now it's probably different. Uh, my question concerns second housing and, and uh, vehicle-based commuting, which is really in rise. Uh, in Estonia, in one year time, uh, country houses prices uh, doubled. And then when we consider also aging population and, and uh, looking, who are looking for better and cheaper environment uh, for recommendation, then uh, what do you think, uh, what's going on and how the tourism is converting to Maybe from from the normal tourism, spa tourism to second housing tourism, and what what's, what what your thoughts about that? Mm, well, I think the COVID has 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 had a great impact in in in, in, in the Finnish context at least on, on on that. We do have a communities that that have even had new new residents that the, that the townhouse has become the second home, and and then the former second home, the summer cottage extended one has become the main one so uh, but 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 mostly it, it, it's it's uh, visible in 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 that level that there are more inhabitants in in the rural areas than than before so that that, that you stay longer in the second home i think the statistics were they were quite dramatic uh, although they're not based on, on any, any uh, mobile phone, phone uh, uh, st uh, 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 tracking, but, but, but these surveys, I think it was, uh, was it 2020 that, uh, um, how many days? It was, it was, you know, it was weeks that, that, 
that the time that the people spend in their second home increased in, in, in 2020. So, so that may, may not stay in that high level, but still it, this, this distant working will, will remain. Uh, I don't think that people will return in the same level to the, to the, to the work environment as, as they were tight before. Mm -hmm. Marit. Um, I wanted to ask that don't you think that we needed this kind of stop uh, uh, either from COVID or from something else uh, because the internal growth uh, as we know is not sustainable in any way even though uh, the graphs you showed uh, they they haven't had um, time or they haven't done any any new uh, prognosis that it should go down a little because of that or it's just a bump in your mm. opinion well yeah uh, that that is a good of a I mean um, I, I in some points somebody can say aloud uh, I'm not sure if, if we should that that this COVID is a, is, 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 a, is is in in a principal level just just the you know the Schumpeterian cre 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 creative destruction that you know the you know uh, survival of the fittest. So, but of course it, it it's a bit bit hard because you haven't done anything that that badly. It's just that 90 percent or 95 percent of the of the of the demand vanishes. So so it it just it it it, it doesn't operate. Potentially the, the the same way as as the original idea of crea creative destruction uh, destruction uh, is is, Total is, destruction. is indicating. <laughs> uh, uh, but but the but uh, I think we needed the the some kind of wake up because uh, the the aviation industry hasn't been very progressive what comes to limiting the emissions. It, there's still a lot of policies, there's a lot of talk, and there's that, but but the practices have been based on growth emphasis, uh, and and the same with the World Tourist Organization. It, it, it as it has become the the United Nations linked uh, operator, it has changed its vision that that the, the, the their aim is to develop tourism in a sustainable and responsible way. I, I can't remember, but that that's the main emphasis. But the practice, what they do is is that they actually brag with the big numbers that how important tourism is and then it's this growth emphasis constantly uh, so i think they should move on from growth to development uh, uh, it would be too big leap to go degrowth but uh, to think the qualitative dimension of, of of tourism instead of this numbers uh, which which has been the, the main motivation of of, of developing and, and, and promoting tourism yes yeah, so i agree some wake up it was needed. Thank you very much. And uh, now we have 10 minutes to the next uh, parallel sessions. So thank you very much, Jörg, for your inspiring and uh, uh, also educating uh, presentation. A lot of data was there. So uh, we can use it for our students, definitely. <laughs> and then okay. see you in 10 minutes in, in sessions. Yeah, thank you very much.